Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. Today we're going to talk about The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. I'm also very sorry if you hear construction. They are doing non-stop work outside and I can't figure out when they're going to stop. So we're going to move on. So The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins was very popular when it came out and I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it. I don't know why I didn't love it. I feel like this one just was a lot more character driven than the other ones before. So I'm not sure how I feel, shall we say. I am very confused still. I finished this book a week ago and I still don't know. I normally like to sit on my feelings before I make this kind of video, especially if I am unsure. And this one, I'm still not convinced about what I am sitting on. So overall, I'm giving this book a four out of five rating. And mo it's really more like a high three out of four, um, or out of five, I should say. But as an overall uh, spoiler-free synopsis, this book follows multiple points of view. It's told in like re reflective, shall we say, like after the fact, uh, journal entries or written down documentation of events where they are reflecting on this event where the moonstone, which is an Indian diamond, was taken from this girl named Rachel at this party. And they are trying to figure out what happened to it or everyone's telling their events of what happened in correlation to people surrounding this event. That's kind of what this whole book is. It's not overly long, but it's also not overly short either. Uh, yeah, it is a really fun book in regards to that. I enjoyed how it did not follow a murder because this is a mystery, but it does did follow a stolen item. And I did like how it had a lot of twists and turns in regards to that. But I did think it was, sorry for the horns outside. I did think it was a little bit, uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know what it is. I think it just didn't live up to, not that I am comparing it to The Woman in White because The Woman in White was fantastic. And if you are wondering, I did make a fully dedicated review of The Woman in White on my channel. So I will link that if you are curious about my thoughts of The Woman in White. But I think for The Woman in White, that one had non-stop engagement from me and this one did not. So I don't know why that is, but that's just the way I felt. So The Woman Stone, I do think it's really, it's worth the read if you are interested, especially with that format. I really did enjoy the format. It had a lot of conversations about, uh, a lot of conversations. <laughs> I can't really tell you what the conversations were without spoiling things, but I did like it. I did give it a four stars overall officially, but I don't want to say anything more. So without spoiling, obviously. Um, so that's my spoiler free synopsis. I do think that it is worth the read if you are interested. So spoiler free, I <clears throat> really do like how we followed characters. I'm going to struggle with names. One moment. I really did like the character of Gabriel Betteridge. I felt like he was a really good narrator for the first chunk of this book and also the ending chunk of this book. I felt like he good, did a good job of starting and ending this book, but I also felt like by the end of this book or even by the middle of the part of this book, I'm like, I need to read Robinson Crusoe. Obviously with pop culture, I know the story somewhat of Robinson Crusoe, but I haven't read it myself. So I felt like at this point I need to read Robinson Crusoe after reading this book. But I feel like he did a good job of setting the stage and introducing all the characters. He was pretty impartial, which was very helpful. Uh, but then also he set the, you know, the end scene very well, I think. I also really liked how we were introduced to all the characters through this lowly person first. I did enjoy that. I also felt like for us to see all the servants in that way, it was interesting and it made them seem more human. I was confused about his daughter because she kind of dropped off the face of the earth. You know, that was that. But I guess that's okay because, you know, she wasn't important to the plot. 
she was important for a little bit, but that was it. So when it came to Franklin Blake, I enjoyed him as a character, but I also found him to be kind of interesting in the regards to like how, I don't know, oblivious he was. And it constantly was directing us to him being like innocent the whole time. Um, but I honestly could say that I never saw Gabriel, um, or not God, Gabriel, Godfrey being the guilty party until the like last scene before it was revealed to him to be the one who had the moonstone. So I was tricked, which I appreciated, but I also, I kind of, I don't know, I missed all the things. Um, and honestly, I have to say my experience of reading this probably was tainted by my health at the time. So I do want to clarify that. Uh, but yes, so this whole book was like, every synopsis thing that I read said, you know, this book is about, you know, appearances, you know, good versus evil and like what appears to be perfect as actually not and then self-sacrifice and all these things. And I was like, mm, I don't know. That just wasn't my personal, what I was looking for maybe. Um, I did really enjoy the opium twist at the end. I felt like that was really interesting or how they were trying to show how he revealed that. And that could have gone horribly wrong. I could have flopped that entirely. It was really interesting to me how uh, Rachel was so invested in Franklin Blake's innocence. He had these both of these girls wrapped around his finger and he didn't know about the poor maid. Rosanna, I forgot her name for a second. It's been a while since I read her section, but <clears throat> she was definitely a foil to Rachel as was um, Ezra to the healthy Franklin. And it was just interesting to see these characters who were healthy and not servants being compared to these people who had a lifetime of difficulty and hardship and maybe who had a lifetime of crime who were put into servitude and then who were dead by the end of the novel. So I found that interesting. I also found it interesting how uh, maybe at a certain point Franklin realized or Blake realized that you know, maybe he should have some care for the servants in his life because, you know, Rosanna actually did him a real solid favor and he would have been put in prison very quickly had she not uh, saved his life from being sent there. And I hope that he would realize the value of her. Now, in regards to cultural respect, I obviously am not Indian. I do not have Indian parentage or I'm not of Indian descent. So I cannot speak to that uh, through my own voice, but I felt like, uh, and I wanna say, but I'm not trying to erase anything I said. I do wanna say that I felt like what I had read seemed historically accurate, did not seem to be disowning anything. It did not seem to be um, mocking anything of the Indian heritage in here. It did not seem to be framing anyone aside from obviously the the people who were guilty. So Godfrey was trying to obviously frame the Indians, but the Indians were innocent. And so I appreciated that. But then the Indians did manage to get the Moonstone and get back to India. Uh, so it was an interesting twist and I'm not sure how to speak on that. So I would love to hear anyone's thoughts in the comments about that as well because it is something I would love to have some more discussion about. I obviously can't speak to that. I have no personal connection to that part of this book. I just know what I read and I grew up in a very um, heavy Indian population in Toronto and I know what I saw. So I was pleased that this book did not seem to mock the culture, culture that it was talking about. Like, Sherlock Holmes could or has done. So I appreciated that part of this. I also was happy to see that this book, I did talk about the fact that, you know, they were automatically assumed guilty because they were Indian, but that did not mean they were guilty because of that, that obviously someone else who was framing them um, knew that they would be guilty or they'd be assumed guilty. And so he, was trying to use that racism against them. So I was kind of, it was a nice twist almost on its head. I hope I'm making my point 
well um, to see that the racism was being shown at that time against uh, itself. Gooseberry was an interesting character in this, the way he followed the right people. I liked seeing him and the way he could see that the mechanic was trying to follow um, Godfrey, who didn't know was Godfrey at the time, who was the sailor. Um, then also the inn at the time. And I liked Sergeant Cuff. So Sergeant Cuff was an interesting character because even though he could have just been like, well, obviously you took it, Franklin, you're guilty. He didn't do that. He assumed automatically that he uh, had gone through all the proper procedures. And I also really liked Ezra Jennings. I want to say that. I really liked Jennings. I think he was an interesting character because he, like this book talked a lot about looks and assumptions and how he looked really old and young at the same time. And so he was always assumed to be looked down on. And I, at the very beginning of his, of his introduction, I thought he was a bad guy, which is what you're supposed to, I think, or what the book is kind of talking about. But he is such an interesting character because he helps solve the riddle. And then at that point, you know that he is actually working so much for this cause. I just really loved his character. And I was so sad that he, you know, obviously didn't make it, but also that he kind of just accepted his fate. So, I mean, I guess that's the way this book goes. So all in all to say, I don't think I have anything else to add to this. Um, I think this was a good book. I think it was just not what I was wanting. I think it just followed so much of the character development and it also just followed so much of us trying to prove Franklin Blake's innocence that that was more my problem. Whereas the one in white followed so much of trying to rescue or trying to reveal the woman in white and trying to solve that mystery and did not try to, I guess, redeem Franklin Blake. I was not so much concerned with Franklin Blake. And so maybe that's why I did not love this book so much. That's why it's not as highly esteemed for me. I did really enjoy this one though. And I do really, I do value it. So I'm glad I read it this year. I did buddy read it with Berna from Berna's Bookish Adventures. I'll leave her channel down below. But I am excited that this one is now read off my shelves and I will be hopefully reading more Wilkie Collins in the future. I like his writing style and I think that this is a kind of author who I could read more from again. So please let me know down in the comments, have you read The Moonstone? What do you think of it? Anything related to that? Also, you can always give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are new here. And I will see you next time with another video. Also, my next uh, Timeless Tomes will be Ruth by Elizabeth Gaskell. And that one should be coming out very shortly also for Victober. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And like I said, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.